Welcome to Spirits Podcast, episode 41, Reptilians and Cults with Kelly Weil. Guys, this episode was really, really cool. And honestly, I think it's the most topical our episode has ever been. Yeah, ever. the most, the most like current to what's going on in the world right now. Yeah. Also, this may be the closest to what we actually talk about in bars on Friday nights. This is really We close. talk about cults with Matt uh, from the Orlando episode probably once every two weeks. Especially when that R. Kelly stuff was going down. Ugh. Yeah, that was like a solid two Don't hour worry. conversation about yeah. R. Kelly and cults. It's true. And conveniently, we were in a bar already, so we could drink our sorrows away. It worked real well. Kids drink responsibly. Anyway, we would love to start this uh, episode by thanking our most responsible and lovely and, and you know, give backer members of our community, Give our backer. newest patrons. L- let's move past it. So thank you so much to Kaylee, Philip, Pret, Emily, JST, Meg, Alexa, and Chrissy for joining us. And of course, to our supporting producer level patrons, Leanne, Shannon, Phil, Catherine, Christina, MCF, Sarah, Katie, Deborah, and Julie. We definitely don't think you are meat-eating reptilians. No, like if you ate steak tartare in front of us, we would be like, obviously a human. Obviously a human, please share it with us some. It'll make sense. Thank you for your cadence there. I guess we're both just getting kind of shwasty on this yeah, beer right a now. Bit. Great. Uh, so Julia, what actually are we drinking for this episode? Um, this episode, we had a great beer called, I don't remember the name of it. Founders Lizard of Cause. Someone like brewed a beer for his sister and it's called Lizard of Cause. It's an imperial stout. It is effing delicious. I want someone to brew me a beer with that epic a name. Get in touch. Get in touch. I'm cheating a little bit, Amanda, this week uh, for Recommendation Corner because I'm going to plug something that's ours already. Uh, um, please do. I'm, I'm going to plug our Tumblr because our <gasps> Tumblr is newly revived. It has posts every single day. I am doing mood boards for every one of our new episodes. They're it's so beautiful. Exciting. I want to print them all out and put them on my fridge. Julia, you're doing such a good job. Thank you. They're beautiful. So follow us over there. Our, our inbox is open. You can ask us questions anonymously if you don't want to like email or tweet or Facebook us or all the other ways you can get in touch. Yeah. Uh, and that's just spiritspodcast at tumblr.com. Yeah, spiritspodcast.tumblr.com. Yeah. That's the one. And I'm also going to promote something that we do, which is we're going to be part of the Two Pods a Day campaign, which is a like podcast recommendation campaign for August, as is Join the Party, my other podcast, Dungeons and Dragons, Storytelling, Good Stuff, which Julia is actually on. She was on yesterday's episode, I am. episode seven. I'm super cool. So good. My character has a crush on Julia's character, which has never I've never experienced in, in actual life, but it, it's it's cute for our, our characters to have. My that. character is also the coolest in she the She really world. is. There's like a there's mysterious books, there's a cool cloak, there's like a, a major character meltdown. It's really have, good stuff. I have a giant I have a giant metal man. Or is he stone? I don't remember. I think metal. There's a kind of Dr. Frankenstein situation going on. It's good stuff, guys. Join the party. And a related non us recommendation is actually the podcast Venture Maidens. It is a awesome incredibly well done hilarious podcast by four women who have been friends for years and years playing dungeons and dragons their characters are so incredible you can tell much like when julia and i banter you can tell we've been friends for 20 years like you can tell that these women they were all roommates they've all been playing D together for years and years um and they are really good really funny they live stream all of their play sessions like what the hell Damn. it takes us so much time to edit together a 45 minute podcast it's bold i can't imagine doing it all live uh so it is really really great venture maidens find them on uh, any podcast player or on youtube yeah if you can't tell we love D podcasts and we, we do love D&D. yeah because we're big old nerds big old nerds and i'm sure a bunch of you are big old D nerds as well so you should definitely check out those shows if you like us you're gonna like this trust yeah. me so with that y'all please enjoy spirits podcast episode 41 reptilians and cults with kelly weil basically an intergalactic invasion into this space through people. I, I'm telling you, it's what all the ancients said, it's what they warned of, it's what we're dealing with. We are so happy to welcome Kelly Weil to the show, who's a reporter at the Daily Beast. Basically, you published a headline that was so clickable that Julia and I like texted each other furiously, like, did you see this article? And we have to talk to you about alien cult. So welcome. Thank you so much. Oh, God, it's not just aliens, it's reptilians and vegetarianism I it guess. is really whatever you want it to be that's the <laughs> of beauty course. of this because it's such an expansive universe within this cult that pretty much any topic you can think of they've brought up and have conspiracy about that's fantastic <laughs> so i would love to start with the particular architecture of this group's mythology maybe you can take us through just like the you know bare bones of the article or the plot points and then um, a little more into their universe and if we chat more about our favorite culty things even better 
So basically, this is an online-based group, um, and it's run by a woman named Sherry Schreiner. Um, and she preaches a few things. It's very New World Order based. They believe that reptilian aliens are taking over the world. Of course. Um, as you do, you know, just cult 101. Um, and she has some very devout followers. And unfortunately, uh, earlier this month, one died after a prolonged fallout over his girlfriend ate uh, steak tartare. Which yep, is that's how it always starts. It is always how it starts. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to rethink all of my menu choices from now on. Right, because you never know what will get you branded as a reptilian as this happens. So Apparently a steak tartare. it's a really raw steak. <laughs> okay, so reptilians are bad and not... Uh, like revered yes right reptilians okay. they are apparently three out of four people that you'll encounter are actually reptilians because that, that's that seems like a high number it does <laughs> it right does seem like a really high number <laughs> and so like statistically like out of all of us all three of us might be reptilians there's a there's a my whole family could be my whole office could be who knows i'm gonna i'm gonna um, fess up to the reptilian this right now it's like when you look around at a family party and you're like guys there are 30 of us in this room i can't be the only gay one i, I just can't i mean true there, there must, someone show yourself to me if there were is there like a reptilian like signal that they know each other I don't know. I haven't dug that deep. I think sometimes they morph out of their skin. Ooh. Yeah. So, like, that's when they'll, like, compile videos of, like, Justin Bieber looks weird in this picture. Is he morphing into reptilian form? And the answer is always yes. Amanda, did you just ask if the reptilians have a gang sign? <laughs> Not a gang sign, I mean, necessarily. Okay. <laughs> but just a little identification marker. Like, there, there's, like, the queer nod. Or there's, like, someone with a tote bag that you like. And then across the subway, you're just like, yeah, nice. Nice tote bag. Okay. So, there's no... Reptilian gang sign, just a queer tote bag. Sure. Okay, yes. cool. Let's, let's go with that. Handshake. If nothing else, there should be a handshake. There should be a handshake. It's right. like the shimmy shimmy cocoa buff kind of <laughs> situation here. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's a handshake. I gotcha. I gotcha. All right. uh, back, to the, back to the cult. Sorry. So this woman uh, ate a steak tartare, which is a, I guess, a raw beef dish. Um, yes. And if you know anything about reptilians, they love to eat raw meat. So okay. my knowledge sense. of reptiles will tell me that is correct. <laughs> um, yeah, so Checks this out. this uh, sowed some division in the uh, in the community. People started calling her a reptilian. Her boyfriend leapt to her aid, being like, "She's not a reptilian," as you would do for any loved one, I think. Of course, I would claim my reptilian boyfriend is definitely not a reptilian. Totally. And what is this community we're talking about? Just like friends and like in a town. Um, mostly, it's mostly internet based. So it's mostly people who follow the mostly online ministry of this woman, Sherry Schreiner, but uh -huh. they do have meetups. So, okay. um, you know, sometimes they've actually come here to New York. Mm -hmm. They, uh, planted, they, they have this magical metal that they think drives away clones, aliens, demons, cool. and they just put it everywhere. Um, I and mean, thank you. It's kind of like the Hare Krishnas, where it's like, you may be disrupting my commute a little bit, but like, thank you for bestowing blessings upon yeah, everybody. Yeah, all they're trying to do is just Super say the word it. so you think about it, and then you're blessed by thinking of it. I just, it's just, it's, an, it's a nice service. It's a consideration, definitely. Yeah. Now, is it like blog-based, or YouTube, or... It is truly multi-platform. Okay. It's great. It's it's the future of media. They beat us to it. That where... cross-platform-ish. <laughs> yeah, I think maybe... In its origins, it might have been radio-based, and that seems like where a lot of people, you know, 15 years or so ago started coming on. But it's very blog-based now, okay. um, you know, it's a network of websites and, you know, GoFundMes. There's a lot of money going oh through. GoFundMes to fight the reptilians. And that is exactly what Go fund like. my battle against the reptilians.com. <laughs> <laughs> register it now because it's probably like in uh, hot demand I'm, I'm going for it right now so as the weeks and months uh progressed this uh this couple got fairly ostracized from their friends who were you know their main their main support group you know their main uh mm -hmm. their circle um and he made up this guy steve made a whole bunch of you know video posts saying you know i'm denouncing sherry our leader etc cetera, etc cetera. and early this month um, his girlfriend, Barb, called police to say, I just shot my boyfriend. He <gasps> asked me to. Oof. Um, and they arrested her on murder charges. So the question now is, 
what exactly happened because we have someone who apparently asked to die. Police said he showed no signs of struggle. It looks like from the autopsy that the gun was placed directly on his forehead and his girlfriend said he took my hands and he put the gun on his forehead. Mm -hmm. So this is a very uh, bitter end to something that was just so absurd. I I almost laugh about it, but it is, um, yeah, it's had a human toll. And in fact, it's the second person to have died in this circle. So um, it's... Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of dark under all the strange reptile layers. There is mm-hmm. there is a body count. Yeah, yeah, and like at the at the base of this is fear, you know, and and that obviously motivates people to act in extreme ways. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm curious what happened to the first person who uh, died under the body count here. Right. So I have an article right now. It's slated to go up on Saturday. Okay. Um, by, the, by the time this episode comes out, it will be out and we'll link to it. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Of um, no, she uh, she died of suicide. Um, it looks like she overdosed. Um, and these were young people. She was 22. The young man who died, he was 32. Mm-hmm. So these are, you know, preventable deaths. And I guess the question is how much culpability this uh, online circle has, you know? Um, So I don't know. It's, I think, um, I think most of the people are still following her. I looked at her GoFundMe and it's still pulling in the big bucks. I'm I'm curious to see if the cult leader, if, if that's like what we're going to choose to call her Mm -hmm. uh, just from a religious history perspective. uh, It's, it's an interesting thing to play with especially since they're not claiming any sort of religious background um but as a cult leader has she said anything in regards to either of these deaths what's interesting is with both she said they were uh government orchestrated murders and cover-ups oh boy okay that's that's a bold statement yeah so i talked to her actually yesterday via email not on the phone Um, But she said that with the first death, it was a NATO death squad. Oh, Um, Okay. Yeah. And with the second one, it was a uh, vampire witch acting on behalf of the CIA. (laughs) As as a podcast (laughs) who has covered vampire witches in the past, um, probably wouldn't do it via gunshot. Just saying. (laughs) Yeah, you'd think there'd be other tools at their disposal, you know? know? like curses and shit. Or blood sucking, you know? Definitely. The normal ones. A much much easier way of going about it. But listen, if, if if you were a vampire and or witch in the modern day, wouldn't it be pretty, pretty, like, you know, strategic to make your kills not from like your your primal instincts and to do it by like normal means if i was a you know evil witch quote unquote because we have a lot of practicing witches as our followers we do um the, the like, like the like popular conception of right. the like evil witch right? i would put a curse on them just because like that it, it's easy and right and you it's can do easier whatever. than having someone have their girlfriend shoot them in the head or whatever that that just doesn't seem like a probable way of doing it to i me. guess i was thinking more vampire like you okay. know two i was going two... wish you were going vampire i yeah, know what's yeah up. i love those like films and books and things where the vampire like gets to be friendly with the doctor you know or, or like has some kind of way around the whole conspicuous body count issue sure smart thing the to do the infrastructure julia of horror yes. is what i'm interested yes. in okay of course um so now that she has said that, I'm sure that her follower kind of has her follower count has stayed intact. Yeah, I would say more or less. So there, I think, is definitely a lot more dissent against her right now mm-hmm. online. And I've spoken with a few people who were either adjacent to the group and have kind of watched this. Apparently, it's morphed over the years. You know, it used to be a little bit more restrained, and you know, it was just fun and games aliens and it's kind of ballooned out of proportion sure um and i am hopefully speaking soon to someone who's actually left and there is a very small network of which the uh dead man steve is was part of um which is actually a kind of a dissenter group and yeah and what's interesting about that is apparently as soon as you leave you get every manner of weird 
allegation thrown at you. Mm -hmm. So you know, oh, well, you know, this isn't Bob. This is actually a clone of Bob. The real Bob is in hell. Um, yeah. Sorry, sorry. I don't mean to laugh at this because it's a very serious topic. It is kind of like, as I've been reporting it, it's been a weird control of like laughter and like, oh no, this is the worst thing I've ever read, but uh, an alien. Okay. Like it's, it's weird. Yeah. Just something about that word makes you think like, oh, okay. We're in like playtime now. Right. But actually this is very, very serious. It's almost like a less serious Scientology where Scientology will go after your family and your finances and your very physical things. These people are just saying you're a clone. That's not really you or you're a weird alien creature. And like once you buy into the fact that there are, you know, in your in your imagining all these kinds of like alternate reality type stuff and like the way we look at the world isn't necessarily the way it is like I see how that can be really freaking super terrifying Mm -hmm. and there's almost like how do you refute that allegation right and I talked to someone who has never been part of um part of this specific if you want to call it a cult but was friends with Steve the man who died and what she said is that Sherry um basically controls people by holding the, pr- the promise of heaven over them, being like, hey, you know, she, Sherry calls herself a prophetess, um, being like, hey, you don't have to agree with me, it's fine, but you might not go to heaven. Ooh. And Yikes. that's tough. And I think another component of this is once, you're, once you've bought into this world with you and your close circle of friends, either online or offline, it's really hard to leave that, you yeah, know? Man. It's... It's that's your family almost. So yeah. I think it's like the one two punch of like, oh wow, the physical world is gonna suck for me for a minute because all my friends are over there and they're calling me a witch. Um, and the other punch is like, hey, I might not go to heaven because I'm not actively fighting the aliens with my friends. So it's it's very alluring to just stick with it. That's like the worst of both worlds. Yeah, seriously. It mm-hmm. is taking away your future. If that if you believe in an afterlife, that's definitely your part of that your thing. future. Yeah. Um, and it's taking away your present, which is your friends and family who are also involved in this um, religious group. And yeah. that is scary as hell. And like it is such a also like psychological and social bonding experience to be like, we know and those people don't. Um, and it, it must feel, I don't know, like I haven't experienced this myself, but it must feel really like lovely and powerful to meet a group of people who share something that maybe you thought was, you know, just you or to come across, like to, di- you know, discover the truth and, and to figure that out, you know, in, in kind of community with people. Mm-hmm. What I think was really interesting is watching, uh, Steve, uh, again, the man who passed away and his friend who also left, um, their attempts to, Uh, take down this cult leader, uh, Sherry, without totally uh, taking down the belief system. Mm -hmm. And I think it was interesting um, sort of the way they were trying to disentangle their beliefs from this woman. Because, again, if you believe in a full religious system, Mm -hmm. a whole way that the world is, that's probably harder to extract yourself from than... Just, you know, one person you can say, all right, she's she's gone off the deep end or something like that. So I think what both of them were saying in their videos was much more restrained than I would have been if someone mm-hmm. called my loved one a reptilian <laughs> or saying, hey, I don't want vengeance against her. I just want people to know the truth. Right. And yeah. that's the trouble, I think, is when you wake up and you're like, oh, all my friends are still in there. Mm-hmm. How do you it, – it's already – absurd how do you express to them it's absurd because you were just there yeah and from a like argument uh, like an argument point of view too it's a lot to say to someone your whole worldview is wrong and also this person is dangerous if you're able to kind of make us make a you know a soft version of that and say like this person is dangerous i'm not gonna like try to tear the whole rug out from underneath you but like hey you know just know that this is this partial thing is something that they can you know discuss and, and maybe change your mind on yeah, and we if we talk about for a second just the pillars of what creates a cult from a scholarly perspective. Yeah, let's do that. Um, charismatic leadership is one of the most important things that a cult can have, 100%. Um, you can see it if you're looking at, uh, for example, the Oneida community uh, from upstate New York. Um, they started out as a paradise sex cult. They sure did. This is and then they wild. Made really beautiful I, silver. I'm like from near there. I don't know about this. <laughs> you know the silver company, the Oneida Silver Company? I've heard of it. Yes. Yeah, so <gasps> they originally started something. out as a sex cult. 
um, which basically this dude believed that um, marriage didn't exist because it wasn't mentioned in Genesis. Uh, and so paradise in, e- uh, in Eden does not include marriage. So basically they believed that they could create, you know, perfect human beings that would then lead to um, the rapture um, by having these like very open uh, sexual relationships. Which just isn't literal... the worst idea, but like no. I feel like it veered off. It was a little <laughs> bit eugenics, which you know uh... gets a little creepy at the end. Um, but basically, this guy was dying at the end. He was the charismatic leader, um, but in the situation where he was trying to pass off the leadership to his son, and his son wanted nothing to do with it, um, the actual cult ended up failing because the charismatic leadership did not transfer and therefore they were just like we're just going to be a a silver company from now on (laughs) um so the sex cult died silver company was born um because charismatic leadership stopped so in this situation it's actually interesting that you talk about discrediting the um the religious leader in this situation but trying to keep the beliefs intact because that could in fact be a transfer of charismatic leadership without trying to like mess with the beliefs. Yeah, but it would be like if Steve was saying, you know, this woman doesn't know the truth. I know the truth. Come on over. That could be mm-hmm. a sort of power yeah. play. I don't think it was even that. You yeah. know, I think I think this happens so quickly is what makes me pretty sad. Mm-hmm. Um, and what's fascinating is he was always he was always a YouTuber. So for a long time, he was documenting. I mean, it's it's 9-11 trutherism, and it's the president is an alien, and it's all that. And it was all uh, under the uh, sort of the talking points of this cult, if you want to call it that. In their press packet. Right. (laughs) And, yeah, and so he had those skills, and he pretty much immediately uh, just started cataloging the – the fallout as it was going on on Facebook. So we had the screenshots of all the arguments back and forth and the minutia of who called who a, who a reptilian. Um, and yeah, I think he wasn't so much interested in taking on the leadership as just being like, this happened to me and, you know, just defending himself, I think is a common refrain he had. Is He's like, I have the right to defend myself. Like, what What amazed me was he was actually very civil about it in the messages he showed to Sherry and one line that like I I hate to say it but it almost it almost cracked me up with how restrained it was he said I don't appreciate you calling my girlfriend a reptilian with all due respect I take offense to that oh it was just trying so hard to preserve it yeah absolutely I wouldn't say again I would not say that if someone called a loved one a reptilian so it was it seemed like a very good faith, almost understated effort to sort of uh, to talk sense into people. But again, it's very hard to do that when you have the whole group that's bought into it. And in fact, something else sad is um, these videos have been widely viewed and members of the group have gone back and played the videos in reverse to listen to satanic messages, which of course, of course, they found. yeah, yep, naturally, yeah. So oh. it's you know, there's very little he can put out that's not a sign to people who interpret everything as you know this, yeah, yeah. this sign from Satan or whatever. What are some other hallmarks of cults besides the charismatic leader? Uh, charismatic leadership is a very important one. Um, you're also going to find um, a new interpretation of old um old stories so basically not just like whole cloth make of thrones right um so in a situation where let's say it's scientology because scientology for the most part was a completely whole cloth thing so in the instance of l ron hubbard not everything is full cloth he does pull some ideas from reincarnation and eastern uh, religion and that sort of thing yeah he Um, tries to present a like unified theory of the world as it already is only oh no no this is the thing but dude was also a science fiction writer so a lot of oh yeah no his religion became was basically science fiction it's it's 100 percent cray and if folks haven't read the book going clear Clear by Lawrence book. Wright. It is like one of the best books of reporting I've ever read. Um, the documentary is great HBO, but the book is also incredible. But um, if you look at a lot of uh, cults that move from Christianity to cult, um, almost all of in the situation <laughs> that is almost yes. exactly what this is, <laughs> but almost all of the cults that move from Christianity to cult um, derive from 
different interpretations of Genesis. Yeah. In particular, sort of like, the first couple situation. of chapters. Yeah. Right. It's super, super interesting, actually. So Christian science, for example, is right. one of those ones that believes that, oh, you know, they specify somewhere in Genesis that we don't actually have bodies. So our bodies don't exist and we can heal through prayer because our bodies don't exist. Um, and that's a completely different thing. Uh, Seventh-day Adventists are a different thing just based off of um, how we view uh, the God creating the universe in seven days, that sort of thing. That name is very descriptive. Thank you, name. <laughs> Thank you, name. You did a good job. <laughs> good job naming your cult. A plus. Good work. Um, but yeah, so those are two of the fundamental parts. I'm forgetting the third. There is definitely a third pillar, but I will. Is it like isolation from friends and family? Not necessarily, though, because not all cults make you isolate from friends and family. Uh, it's uh, I, it's very much that's a very much a like. 80s 90s idea of cults where cults oh, really? are a bad thing and they're going to take you away from your families and they're going to right. try and pull you away into this evil evil universe cults by definition are not a bad thing so they're just a precise so you know like christianity when it first started was a cult of judaism it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just a different belief that is an offshoot and doesn't have enough followers for it to be called a specific religion Wow. So I like that we're going to get some tweets about cults that. Cults are <laughs> baby religions, basically. And if right. they, you know, form enough followers and they form, you know, a charismatic leadership chain and stuff like that, that makes them a religion. I see. And just the way we talk about them so often, like they come into the news or into kind of popular imagination mm -hmm. when tragic or sensational stuff goes down. Hell yeah. Um, so I see how... I would think like, oh yeah, like it's isolating and it's toxic and it, you know, all these things because those are the ones that we just happen to have heard about. Hell yeah. And that's very much a new generational thing. Probably started in the sixties, became very popular in the 80s, 90s, and then just, you know, to where we are now. That idea. It's kind of died down a little bit. Yeah. Hopefully. I mean, yeah, I think this is a perfect case of a cult um, that can exist, you know, pretty integrated with the rest of the world because it's mostly online. The, uh, the leader is based in Ohio, but uh, Steve lived in Pennsylvania. So, I mean, you can still interact with it and you can still be part of this really immersive world as long as you're there online and you, know, you can still be living with your family. Yeah. Something that I think a lot of people seem to share in this group was that it sometimes offers solutions to problems that, hey, you know, those are legitimate. So, you know, um, the young woman who died uh, about four and a half years ago, I was reading her old blog, and I think one of her first posts was about, like, you know, people are so dependent on fast food that we're not eating real foods. And I'm like, hey, you know, as a concerned millennial, I I kind of feel that. Yeah. Bring the truth, right. The, right. Uh, the New York Post just put out an article about how fake food, you know, infiltrates all food basically at this right. point. Right. I've What have I had to eat today? I've had like eight granola bars and like <laughs> some trail mix. I'm like, I don't know what any of this is. I had Those sushi that was def not the kind of fish that I said it was. <laughs> the, uh, the Dwayne Reed's sushi that's oh, the <laughs> oh, that's a horrifying um, idea <laughs> yeah so i mean if you can if something can offer you a an easy solution to something that's a pretty obvious and endemic problem yeah that's an easy hook um i think maybe it's it's a few steps from there to uh aliens but it's maybe fewer mm. than you think yeah there are some great alien cults but uh <laughs> basically the point i want to bring up is it's so interesting how the role of the internet now plays in religious like freedom and also religious expansion. Uh, it's not like um, Joseph Smith had to travel across the world in order to uh, convert people to Mormonism. Yeah. Now you can just put up a blog post and people across the nation and across the world will be, you know, being like, oh, I, I agree with that. That makes sense in my mind. You know, and it's just, it's fascinating and it's going to change the world of religion, I think. Yeah. I mean, just from that, I think, excellent example, like Joseph Smith went bankrupt or almost bankrupt a couple of times printing, you know, his kind of testimonials. Yeah. Um, and he also bought way too many mummies, fake mummies. <laughs> he did, he did. So. Later, later. But initially, after the tablets were found and he uh, were found, et cetera, it doesn't matter. It's fine. Don't, I have no beef with Mormons. Um, <laughs> he had to work so hard to get his ideas out there. And there uh, were other similarly viable, similarly, like, interesting ideas 
that people brought up at the time, but they were less good at marketing, yeah. you know, and like the, the way and the number of people that you can get your ideas in front of is like a real factor in what religions made it and which didn't. And so what I'm wondering now is with the internet being more or less, you know, democratic, um, obviously some people have bigger followings than others. And like, there are, there are, you know, not everyone has access, et cetera, but it's probably going to be a lot more like populist in a way where the ones that end up being popular are not the like well positioned to take off ones necessarily, but just sure. the ones where the ideas really catch on. And so I'm wondering what that will be. Like, how will those vary from the, you know, ideas that rose um, in the 18th and 19th centuries. I think this ends up with us, like, crowning Gwyneth Paltrow as a prophet. Um, oh, <laughs> yes. I'll praise the goop. I'll praise it. It's, it's veering in that direction really quickly. It's been fascinating. It really <laughs> is. Like, anti-vaxxing, like, oh all kinds God, of bad that's... shit works its way into that blog. Yeah. I know an anti-vaxxer nurse, but now, now I'm going off topic. Goop actually did put out an article recently where it's like, people should vax their children. Okay. 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 So like we, we can support that. Fair. Thank you, Ono Ross and Carrie, for giving me that link because they did a good job on yeah, it. Yo, if you like cults, listen to the podcast Ono Ross and Carrie. It is incredible. Two friends sort of Julian Amanda style, like genuinely join cults and oh like join goodness. movements to be like, what is this all about? Like tell me. I don't know. You know, and, and they start everything with like this could be it and this could be the truth. And so mm-hmm. we're just gonna go experiment and see. They did a great one on Mormonism, they did a great one on Scientology. It was a nine part series on Scientology. Tall, and they like genuinely worked their way up. Yeah. That is bold. Wow. It is Until they really got good. kicked out. It was Until great. they got kicked out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, it's really good stuff. They're but... doing uh, the summer of UFOs right now. And it is my favorite thing in the world. That is amazing. You know what I think maybe a kind of an internet cultish mindset, if not cult, is I read a lot about Infowars, um, mm, yeah. which is... So Alex Jones, he is an incredibly charismatic leader. He's out there shouting and going red and taking off his shirt all the time. And he is someone who, for a certain group of people, they've been convinced that he's the truth, right? He's the only one telling them the truth. Is That's what you'll get if you talk to an InfoWars reader. Mm -hmm. Um, And yeah, and again, if you go down the the rabbit hole there, it's every layer of like, you know, gremlins and... Uh, conspiracy you can think of. And of course, there's always a link in the sidebar to buy our products. I think that's like Mm -hmm. maybe... That might be the modern cult. No, Alex Jones 100% fills the category of the charismatic leader um, and also goes after other cults, which is fascinating. So, for example, um, my boyfriend Jake and I live together, um, and he was talking about this crazy cult that he heard about in California where it's all the rich people and they sacrifice people. I'm like, do they? And, like, of course, this leads to me as a history major being questioned. I'm like, oh, do they actually sacrifice people? He's like, well, they burn people in the effigy. I'm like, well, that's just a scarecrow that they're burning right. he's like well Alex Jones videotaped him I'm like that oh, dude come on oh, so but basically yes Alex Jones in the situation of Pizzagate with the situation of just any yeah. sort of thing that he's leading where NASA has to answer things being like no we don't have children you know sex slaves up in Mars like can that's I, ridiculous can I just say that was Go my that was my brilliant co-worker who asked NASA and they are so mad oh. that we asked them about that <laughs> They're... I'm so glad. <laughs> yeah, y'all but... are doing good work. <laughs> good, good work. <laughs> yeah, shout out Ben. Um, um, but yeah, it's it is. I think it's probably the closest thing. I I think maybe, as, listen, you if you go a few hyperlinks through Facebook, I like to do this thing because I'm a, just a masochist and I like to look at things course. on Facebook. I'm super glad you do because you can bring the best of it back to me and I don't have to do it myself. <laughs> I listen. I've I've got just email drafts of hyperlinks that I'm not doing anything with. So (laughs) I'll send this on. Um, Yeah. And you just click through and it goes from like, okay, you know, Obama's a little weird to Obama's a clone to, you know, you you can just go down and you go weird Muslim clone reptilian. I feel like it's probably the, the breakdown. That's the natural progression. And at every stage you have people who vehemently, you know, just are saying, yes, thank you. Someone's speaking the truth. So glad someone pointed out that Obama is a clone. Of course. (laughs) Yeah. And it's, you're going to get these people who, again, they say, oh, wow, I finally found my people who believe this, who aren't afraid, who aren't too PC to say Obama's a clone. (laughs) Yeah. And yeah. And there's, there's gotta be a sense of belonging in that, I'm sure. Yeah. Exactly. Bringing us back to the beginning, there is a super fine line between 
you know, community and cult between curation and filter bubble, right? Between yeah. like open mindedness and being so open and like emotionally raw that you are influenced by someone who is, you know, so charismatic that they should be careful. Um, and it is, I don't know, like, I'm so happy that we're in the internet age because it's so interesting. And like, most of my friends are from the internet, you know, like I've, I've benefited personally directly so much from finding niche communities online. Um, and it's, it's, I don't know. I don't think that any of them are that culty, you know, but like, who <laughs> I mean, knows? Who knows? Like early YouTube, it was a little bit culty, but yeah. I mean, we could all be super brainwashed. You don't know. We don't know. Like I, I don't, Oh, it's, it's so, it always freaks me out a little bit to kind of look at stuff and, and think to myself like, Oh, this is weird or this is not because like, it is such a subjective thing. It is. And you know, happily no one is, you know, getting into flame wars that end in, in folks dying under, um, you know, dubious circumstances, but it just feels like everything is on a continuum and, and it's, it's pretty easy to slide one way or the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that was an important distinction you made that cults aren't necessarily negative. They can just be powerful communities. And that's, that's a lot of things you look at. I'm, I'm sure it's hard to draw the line in a lot of places. It definitely is. I think it definitely is. Kind of culty, kind of cool. Kind of culty, kind of cool. <laughs> this all sounds like Twitter, which is kind of like just giving me shivers. I'm like, yep, that's that's right. That's like, right. That's our hashtag. I got uh-huh. you. All right. Yep. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Kelly, I'm interested uh, into what kind of got you into cults in general. Oh, man. Well, pretty much just being online really late at night. Sure. Um, I mean, we've all been there. Yeah. Wait, where are you online? Just like like Facebook rabbit hole? Like which which areas? Um, This, I think I found this thing from a Twitter rabbit hole, actually. Actually, I mean, not even a rabbit hole. I've got to totally credit someone I follow who Go for it. tweeted out just an AP Wire story with just this like, almost, bizarrely no details. It's like, woman shoots man says it had to do with uh with a cult i'm like well you can't end it there come on <laughs> someone like, tell come me together more. with those facts my right dude. <laughs> yeah i don't know i think like just overall i spend too much lo- too much time on the internet so you know it starts pretty conventionally like you're on twitter or facebook or reddit and you know you just like asking the questions or sometimes the question is like you're you're looking at someone that you haven't spoken to in seven years, and it's like, why are you the way that you are? <laughs> and you, Been there on Facebook, and done you that just, thing. And you just click through things, and you're like, okay, okay. And it's like I said, you know, just like hyperlinking all the way down. It's like, oh, wow, I've never even heard about that. And I, I mean, like right now, because I have a lot of people I'm talking to in like cult-adjacent things, mm-hmm. the prominent thing is that – um. Oh man, I feel horrible. Uh, Chester Bennington, I think. Ooh, yeah. The, yeah, the former, um, the Lincoln Sin- Park. Lincoln Park, thank you. Um, who died of suicide earlier this week, I think. Um, and people are saying that he was the uh, illegitimate son of John Podesta, who had him killed. This is, I mean, it's not something. It's not something to joke about, but it's something right. that you look at it and having just sort of been in contact with people who are conspiracy theorists watching this sort of seed of an idea spread out over the course of the week. Oh no, contain it. Yes. And to watch it almost become kind of canon um, among people. Like it's, um, it's, it's, it's interesting. It's kind of sad. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think weird stuff begets other weird stuff. I mean, I can even say that with like, my uh, my advertisements right now, my Google ads, because I've been looking at weird conspiracy I'm videos. I'm sure they're super it's weird like, at this point. Are you sure uh, Hillary Clinton isn't uh, building a bunker? I'm like, <laughs> like well, I, I think don't she probably know. is, but I mean, who, probably there's one already under yeah, your house. That's like, right. That don't make sense. Those Clintons devo have a bunker, though. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Point conspiracy theorists, but uh, yeah, you so, know the security, uh, <laughs> the Secret Service totally built them a bunker. That's Absolutely. what I'm saying. Years ago. Years, years ago. Years ago. Right, right. Like Twenty or thirty years ago. There was a bunker built for the Clintons. If Whatever. I had the resources, I'd have a bunker. Like I have no Same. qualms Dude, about that. Same. No downsides to having a bunker. Absolutely. I, I walk around my neighborhood where my work is. I'm like, okay, so there's three areas. There's three buildings that have the like, in case of a nuclear fallout, you can go here. Oh yeah, no. As I'm like, kid, I know were... exactly where those buildings are in my All neighborhood. Over. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what's so funny. I think doomsday prepping is an element 
elements of a lot of these like oh, cults man. or even turned religions. I mean, even uh, Mormonism. I, I grew up oh, near. Yeah. yeah, I grew up near where Mormonism was founded. Um, so I know a lot of people, and it's just it's kind of an everyday thing. They're like, yeah, you know, the cans we keep in the garage. And yeah, they're like, we have to have six months of. Um, of supplies. just like supplies yeah. because when the rapture comes there's going to be six months of hell we're gonna survive and then we all get to go to heaven yeah and also like a religion that barely survived and was on the rails and had to you know go across the country like survivalism yeah, is a fundamental it. part of it it mm-hmm. makes so much sense but also you know in the in the biblical sense too it makes a lot of sense because the rapture is scary and you want to have you know food for your family totally. and it's really cool because they'll just they'll rotate out their um, oh yeah no pantry. they know what they're doing it's insane they it's, know what they're I doing costco was kind of made for mormons in that way costco <laughs> was made for mormons that is gonna be our twitter poll thing and listen thank you thank you more like costco is great costco thank rocks. you lds i love it so much i but- want to buy uh 40 uh, 144 things of uh Fruit leather when I go to... <laughs> that's a thing. The fruit leather is a thing. Don't sure, give me that look. Sure. I was just very uh, delighted by the fact that you were like, not 44, 144. It's 144 it's because by it's 12, a multiple yo. of 12. Okay, oh, yeah. Thank, no, no. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We, we just held hands there because we had a moment <laughs> of multiplicity. I know what you were going for. Good. But my senior thesis in college was on homesteaders. So people who kind of like leave specifically like suburban or urban areas and then go kind of off grid or semi off grid to, you know, live a like self-sustaining lifestyle. There was an HGTV, HGTV or Food Network mom that the pioneer woman. She's Food Network. Okay. Food Network. She's great. I mean, she like lives on a cattle ranch. So Mm. that's a little bit less interesting to me because it's like, it's like a pre-existing like agricultural life. Like folks who don't live on, you know, city grids have to like live that way. But I was interested in people who like lived in Brooklyn and then like left everything to like go to a farm to, you know, have a totally like homemade life. I did Um, walk into your apartment once and you had three pioneer mom books (laughs) just sitting on your table. I mean, that sounds right. Yeah. Yeah. Feels right. Uh, I, I, what I did basically was just like survey all of the memoirs published between like 2010 and at the time 2014 um, of homesteaders who like wrote books and were making money from book deals talking about like either how to do it or why they did it. And it was a really interesting like post-recession reactionism to like Mm -hmm. wanting to be anti-consumerist man. Like there were so many um, like ideological things that went into this. There were political ones in some cases. There were a lot of just like queer and kind of like, you know, alternative lifestyle folks who wanted just the security of like having their own space and life and skills. So um, anyway, that's a really interesting thing. And it does all come back to doomsday preppers. Yeah. I mean, can I just out myself here as um, after the election, I assembled a bag with my passport, a fully loaded charger and some money. I shouldn't say this because someone's going to take it. I thought you were going to say a fully loaded gun. I'm just oh, like, no. I mean, do your thing, Unexpected, girl. Unexpected, but go, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, have, I have friends who like haven't used credit cards because they, you know, like are, are serious about not wanting to have their activities tracked or haven't traveled out of the country because they are non-white and are worried about harassment coming back yeah. into the country. Right. I mean, for me, it's probably illogical. I mean, I, I live in Manhattan. Like, if something happens, I'm done. You know, I'm in the blast zone. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm going <laughs> to die no matter what. But, you know, it's just that little thing. It's like, if, if I feel bad, can I go look at the bag? Yes, I can go look at the bag. It's, you know, it's... I can disappear if I need to disappear. Yeah. yeah. I, no, I, think... I, I look at my Irish passport sometimes and just smile and stroke its cover because <laughs> I, I have an escape route. You go, I can go full burn notice if I need to. I can move to any country in Europe. Any. I go wherever I want. Well, until Brexit Until. <laughs> no, because we're grandfathered in because special relationship. Yo, high five! 20 years sucks. of civil war has some positive consequences <laughs> sure. sometimes. Yeah, no, it's just funny. Like, the, the, the seeds of, you know, the, the paranoia or what have you is like, we all have it. At least I definitely have it, you know. I'm like, yeah. I'm, I'm ready to go. If this, go, if this goes bad, I'm like... But again, like, sensibility... And paranoia exists on a spectrum. Absolutely. Like you see someone coming at you with their hand in their pocket, like on a, on a dark night, you're going to cross the street. Maybe, you know, maybe that's not the case and whatever, but like you have that instinct in you. And like, we are the descendants of the animals that were scared. Yeah. It's and, our monkey brain and made the safe choice. And so it, it 100%, like, again, if, if you can find like a safe, warm fire of people who believe the same shit that you do and feel like you are, it is you against the world and the world against you. Like that is such a 
a potent psychological combination, man. Yeah, and I think one thing is um, I spoke to the brother of the young woman who died, and he said that basically every month there was a new apocalypse scenario that she'd posit. You know, that was either uh, more realistic, you know, like the Chinese are invading, which I'm not saying is realistic, but on the continuum of planet (laughs) X. On the the (laughs) spectrum of world ending, the Chinese invading is on the higher side. There are folks who live in China. Yes, China China definitely exists, whereas the other end was uh, Planet X is going to crash into us and Minotaur is going to jump off Planet X. I mean, cool. Yeah, I feel Uh, like Planet X crashing into us would just do it. You wouldn't need the Minotaur. But the Minotaurs have to hit every other part of the planet that didn't get hit with the other planet. (laughs) Uh, Great side story. Uh, So I have a friend who is really into the, like, drag community um, and was on Fire Island recently and was like, yo, Amanda, you totally missed the best party on Fire Island last night. And I was like, oh, like, what what was the party? She's like, oh, it was Labyrinth-themed. And apparently no one can think of any costume to go with Labyrinths except for Minotaurs. (laughs) So you look around and there's a bunch of, like, Fire Island bears in their 40s and 50s dressed as minotaurs. But there's David Bowie in the Goblin King. Like, what the fuck are they doing? There were probably some twigs dressed as David Bowie also, okay. but for the most part, there were just minotaurs. Can I just say, whoever stumbled across the island of minotaurs started their own cult and was totally, totally justified. They're like, I've seen them. The, the minotaurs are there. They're we're real. We're in week two of that, of that cult's <laughs> formation right now. It's so good. Like, honey, I have to explain so much to you about, uh, about queers and about... <laughs> <laughs> about Fire Island, about dressing up, about themed parties. I- I'm so sorry. <laughs> so I think that was a really great modern day cult uh, kind of roundup. Not not necessarily a roundup, but a deep good dive. overview and deep dive yeah. of certain aspects and kind of where we can see uh, cults moving into the future with the internet and with community in that sense. Stay tuned. Uh, yeah, so uh, thank you so much, Kelly, for joining us. Thanks for having me. It was great to have you. We really appreciate it and we really appreciate you. Normally we do stuff that was, you know, relevant in uh, 800 BCE, but uh, you, you brought something that this was is really like relevant this- now month yeah, yeah. We're gonna link <laughs> glad, glad to bring it to the modern day no i really appreciate that um and listeners i hope you enjoyed this episode um and stay creepy stay cool don't be in a cult <laughs> call your daddy call your cult. dad <laughs> Queers was created by Julia Shafini and me, Amanda McLaughlin. It's edited by Eric Schneider with music by Kevin McLeod and visual design by Allison Wakeman. Subscribe to Spirits on your preferred podcast app to make sure you never miss an episode. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Tumblr at Spirits Podcast. On our Patreon page, patreon.com slash spirits podcast, you can sign up for exclusive content like behind the scenes photos, audio extras, director's commentary, blooper reels, and beautiful recipe cards with custom drink and snack pairings. If you like the show, please share with your friends and leave us a review on iTunes. It really does help. Thank you so much for listening. Till next time. <laughs>